when American taxpayers finance drug research, uh, I believe they've earned the right to be able to purchase that pharmaceutical at a reasonable price. But that's not really happening. Uh, instead, so often taxpayers' wallets are hit twice for uh, too many medications. They pay once for the drug research, and then they pay, if they can afford to do so, a really, uh, in some case, cases, outrageous price uh, for the resulting medication. It is a contradiction that Americans pay for pharmaceutical research, and yet too many of them are unable to afford, afford the resulting medications. And this is particularly insulting when the same medication that was financed with taxpayer money is sold abroad at a much lower price than Americans uh, are charged for the same drug. Uh, I, uh, through this amendment, utilize uh, an existing law that actually Bob Dole wrote uh, some years ago and set out uh, on a permissive basis that the Secretary of Defense may utilize that law and set up a standard for how the Secretary of Defense can utilize that law with reference to significant amounts of research that are fund funded uh, through the Department of Defense. Uh, a good example is a drug called Extandi uh, that treats prostate cancer. The Department of Defense has invested a significant amount of money to bring that drug onto the market. Uh, it was owned until recently by a Japanese company, uh, charging far less there in Canada, in Norway, than is charged to American taxpayers. This simply says that the Secretary of Defense would have authority uh, to utilize a standard under the uh, Dole Buy Act uh, to license a competitor and let competition work to bring down prices uh, if the price that is set here on a taxpayer financed drug is so high that it exceeds uh, that in seven other uh, industrialized advanced economies like our own. That's the thrust of it. Uh, I think taxpayers deserve to be protected. This doesn't uh, compel the Department of Defense to do anything it could not do now, but it does set a metric, a standard, uh, by which the department could look to try to make uh, pharmaceuticals available. Uh, it won't take care of all of the problems of pharmaceutical prices, but it would take care of those that are financed through the Department of Defense, paid for by taxpayers, and to which I think they should have an opportunity to get at reasonable prices. That's the thrust of the amendment. Mr. Target, thank you very much. Do you have further information for the committee or another amendment? Uh, I uh, glad to forward the committee other, any other information to answer questions about it. Move on to my other amendment if you prefer. Or, recognized okay. For his other amendments. Yes, uh, the second amendment deals with uh, what has been one of the most highly controversial issues that we've had in the. Sir, would this be I'm 369? Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the, for the committee, it would be uh, dog at 369. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Uh, so 369. It concerns the topic of Iran, which is, remains a highly controversial uh, issue here. Uh, but this should not be considered to be a highly controversial amendment. Recognizing that we have our service men and women in harm's way in the same theater in which Iran, a very dangerous country uh, that has engaged in all kinds of uh, misconduct that, that threatens our interests and has threatened world peace, uh, but that our, we have troops, we have servicemen and women in the same theater. Uh, and we saw the importance of being able to communicate with the Iranians uh, when some of our service members were uh, taken into custody by the Iranians here a couple of years ago. Uh, I believe it's important to have a means of communicating with them without in any way condoning or applauding their misconduct, but just a simple a way, military to military, of being in communication with them to be able to assure uh, that we use all of our types of power in this theater, diplomatic and non-diplomatic. Uh, the amendment that has been drawn uh, makes reference to the relationship that Secretary Kerry and the former foreign minister of Iran had in helping to get those service members released within 24 hours. Uh, I understand that uh, you may not think as fondly of Secretary Kerry as I do, uh, if it's at all helpful in assuring the nonpartisan nature of this amendment uh, to take that portion out, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm not trying to 
uh, take a position on what's been done in the past, though I think it's been very helpful myself, uh, but to simply see that we have this means of communication available in, in the future. It's a simple sense of Congress uh, proposal, but it is encouraging the same thing that a number of retired generals today urge the administration to do. That is to have an office available that can communicate in the event of uh, direct conflict, uh, seeing our people in harm's way there, so that we can try to de-escalate conflict and have the opportunity uh, to at least speak first before we shoot, rather than shooting first and asking questions later. And with that, I'd be glad to respond to any questions the committee might have. Thank you very much.